Welcome to my studio. I'm an artist. My name is Leonard Kozianski. This is where I work. This is my studio. This is where I paint my pictures. And I'd like to talk to you today about a painting that I did 20 years ago called Stargazer, Lily, and Butterfly. And it's a mysterious painting. And it has haunted me for many years. There have been things connected to it that I can't explain. And now that I'm an old man, I feel compelled to tell the story of this painting and how it was created and, and what happened with it. It all started here uh, at 128 Granville Avenue. I got married in the year 2002 to the love of my life. I was absolutely in love with this woman and I loved the marriage that we created and the home that we created together. And this is it. This was one of the most beautiful places in the world to me because of what we created inside it. And at the back of this house was my studio one of my favorite studios ever. It had a, kind of a, a homey feel to it, but it was still very much a studio. I really loved it. I really loved this studio. And I created some of my best works of art here. About a year after our marriage, we went to a local garden center to buy some plants. And while we were there, I saw this plant and I had to buy it as a stargazer lily. Now, I have done paintings based on these blossoms before, but I've never done one based on the whole plant. And so I really wanted to just get the whole plant and bring it home, bring it into my studio and look at it. For some reason, I don't know why, I just had to have this. It was unusual that I would be in a garden center and just feel compelled to buy this plant and, and paint it and draw from it, but I did. I brought it home. And at first, I felt no real connection to the plant. Uh, you know, I did a drawing in my sketchbook that was kind of okay, but I, you know, eh. I did another one and I just, it was okay, but I felt no real connection. And then, all of a sudden, I felt possessed. It was as if something of outside of me was flowing through me. The drawing itself was just dropping off or falling off the tip of my pen. I couldn't explain it. It was just suddenly there. After a couple of hours, this image, this very complex image, just sort of magically appeared on the pages of my sketchbook. I drew it, but it was almost as if I was watching my hand create the image and I wasn't really in charge. This drawing is about 11 by 8 inches and it's in pen and ink and I didn't have to make any edits or any changes, so I drew a, a pencil grid over the drawing in order to blow it up to a large painting. And I did make a large painting, uh, 64 by 46 inches, about 6 by 4 feet. And this is the painting, or at least this is the underpainting. Now, when I paint, I paint in layers, and there are different stages. And this is the underpainting stage, which I liked a lot, uh, but it was a little flat, a little cold, uh, it lacked atmosphere. Uh, it lacked warmth, and I felt it necessary to glaze the painting. And this is what a glaze looks like on a palette. A gla oil paint is of two types. There are opaque pigments, and there are transparent pigments. A glaze is made by taking a transparent pigment and mixing it with a lot of medium, and applying it to in a, the canvas in a very thin layer. So here we see this red, sort of a blood red, 
that I use as a glaze for this painting. And this is what the painting looked like after it was glazed. This is the stargazer and lily painting when it was finished. Now, this is what it looked like before it was glazed. And this is what it looked like after it was glazed. And I really liked it. And my wife really liked it too. And she insisted that we keep the painting, which I did. And I inscribed it to her on the back. And we put it up in our living room and it stayed there for decades. It brought a lot of life and animation and warmth to our home. Several years after that, I liked that underpainted stage of the painting. And I wanted to return to that. So I did another version of this painting on wood panel. This is much smaller. This is 16 inches by 12 inches on a wood panel. And there's a big difference between painting on a wood panel and painting on a canvas. A wood panel is hard, it's smooth, and so it allows for more detail than a canvas painting. And this painting is more detailed. I liked it a lot, but I couldn't keep it because I'm a professional artist and I have to send my artworks out into the world to be part of the, the lives of other people and to enrich other people's lives. So I sent this painting to the Carl Hammer Gallery in Chicago. And if you're ever in Chicago, you've got to stop by the Carl Hammer Gallery. It's a great gallery. Carl Hammer sold it into a very traditional collection to a person with a very traditional home. And this painting looks beautiful in that home. Contemporary art can fit in any decor, any type of home, any look, depending on what you choose and what you combine it with. Well, several years after I painted this picture, a local writer by the name of Wendy Winters contacted me and asked if she could do a profile of me for a local magazine called Chesapeake Taste. It was a very nice magazine. I liked it a lot. It had a sort of a cultural focus to it. And Wendy Winters was a really good writer. So I invited her over to our home and we spent some time in my studio. I was talking to her and she really loved this painting that we had saved that was in our living room called Stargazer, Lily and Butterfly. And she featured it in this article, in this profile that she wrote. And I was real happy with the profile. It, it was just a wonderful article in a wonderful magazine. However, a few months after this article was published, the magazine went out of business. They went belly up. Everyone there lost their job. It was a disaster. It was not just a disaster for the people making the magazine, but a disaster for the area because it was such a good magazine to have. Well, the author, Wendy Winters, a great writer, an excellent writer, who focused on the cultural side of our town. Several years later, she was murdered, brutally murdered, in a mass murder at the local newspaper. It was terrible. What a loss for all a loss of all five of these people, but especially Wendy Winters, because she was such a good writer for the cultural arts in our area. I was really upset because she was a great writer and she really liked my work. And her murder was so brutal. But then, a few years after that, this wonderful marriage of mine, this love of my life, this beautiful place that we had created came to a sudden end in a very painful divorce. And there was nothing I could do to stop it. Try as hard as I could, I couldn't stop it. And our marriage ended up in a disaster. So here are these three events. A magazine, a great magazine goes out of business. A wonderful author and woman is brutally murdered 
and this great marriage, this excellent, loving, wonderful marriage comes to a crashing end. What do those three events have in common? This painting. This painting, which I always loved, but which, when I painted it, seemed drenched in blood? Well, I don't believe in objects being possessed. But some people do believe that spirits possess objects. And I have a good friend, a therapist, a very scientific man, a very materialistic man, but even he will admit that there are these, what he calls, synchronicities in life, these connections that seem to occur between objects and events. He calls them synchronicities. Other of us might look at them and, and wonder if there might not be, is there, is there some sort of magic? Some sort of dark magic? Even voodoo magic? Well, I can't say. That's not for me to decide. That's for you to decide. Thank you for watching this video and listening to me tell you about the stargazer lily and butterfly painting and how and why I created it and about the tragic events that seem mysteriously connected to it. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, like, and share.